Hey folks, uh, here is a new chop of the day for you. Uh, part of the reason I'm doing this chop of the day is to show off what my new app Cordy can do. Uh, this is for those folks who, if they play a lot of chords but they don't quite know the names of all the chords they're playing or if they teach via video chat, uh, this video is kind of a demonstration for basically what Cordy is really good at doing for people in that uh, target demographic. All right, so this chopper of the day comes from a Facebook video. Um, somebody posted this, and it had a pretty cool sound to it, but it also had some weird stuff that the guy was playing, so I'm hoping that this can clarify it a little bit. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, so let's check out, um, this is what I've figured out that he plays. So the very first chord is that. Next we have, uh, sounds like that to me. Explain this, so. Some kind of, uh, the top note is playing like a B6, and the left hand is, a uh, is another, like, B over D sharp. Which one do I want to look at? I want this one, B6 over B over E flat. That's the one I want. And then we got this crazy D chord. Sounds like that to me. So this is the one that I'm like, mm, that's not really a, uh, I see, I know what you did. You know, you did this, then you did this, then you did this in your right hand. I can understand that logic. I can understand this logic. understand that logic but you put them together it's not quite 100 percent legit um this chord which is kind of e major six over d7 sharp five that's this one on the bottom and then we go to this and then we have this c chord First thing to notice, you know, you got the big chord symbol on top and then you got these little ones underneath it that they may be a little bit easier to understand because they're supposed to be um, splitting up, you know, what what is the three note voicing we found or a four note voicing we found and then what are the remaining notes. So it usually works out pretty well, you know, if the hands are kind of far apart. So uh, let's take a look at what he did. So we've got this chord, which you could think of as like an E flat minor four over a, uh, over like a, like an E6, but without the B. As soon as we add a B, we get an E6 chord. Okay. So for this first chord, we could have done this because we got a six on top. We can do dominant, all kinds of different dominant chords. We can do major. We can do this major. We can do. We could just keep it like that and add a fifth in there. And then for the next chord. or a speaker's a little louder. We could do this. We could do altered. We could do this altered, which would be kind of dope. That's a, like a B7 over a, a regular E flat seven, which is a very cool sound. Okay, now for this chord, we've got this E on top, so we could make it even major. Um, I can understand why he did you know, if he did this for the B chord, and then that for the D chord, sorry, this for the D sharp chord, and then this for the D chord, it's because he wants, you know, he's trying to minimize the number of repeated notes. If he did this for the D chord, then the, this shape, these two notes, the D sharp and the, and the D, uh, are the only ones that change. So I can see why he did that. So let's assume he's going for a dominant sound. So there's that choice. 
as opposed to this choice. There's this choice. If you want to stop and sound, you could have done this. You could do that. You could do this. All viable choices. And if you have any questions about when any, uh, any of those voicings that I'm playing are, just pause the video and you'll see exactly what I'm playing. You can see all the notes on the keyboard down here, as well as uh, written out here and also written out here. So it's super easy to figure out, you know, what is being played. Um, for this G chord, he plays this, which is like a C minor, regular 7 for G. He could have done it uh, this way, could have done it straight E flat triad. this one two five or one two four kind of sound uh in the top voicing there's always going to be a whole step of some kind or below the melody note with a with an interval between the top note and the bottom note there's always going to be an interval of some something bigger than a whole step or a minor third and then those notes there's going to be a whole step so you're going to get like a chunky kind of sounding voicing so he could have done that with g7 now for this part, he can he has two choices with uh, this melody note of a C sharp. He can do he can do this chord, something like that, like some sort of a C dominant. You know, all these are totally viable options if he has got a C sharp as the melody and C sharp as the root. If he's got a C as the bass, he's kind of limited. He can do uh, he can do flat nine, flat thirteen, or flat nine sharp five. Or it. He could do a 13. He could do. He could do that. He could do that. It's a C7 sharp nine. This is the sharp nine part. This is the A7 with no fifth. He could do. Uh, this is basically a. Um, is a E flat half diminished or an. Uh, what else could this be? F sharp, F sharp minor six. Um, as you can see right here, F sharp, or an F sharp, just an F sharp minor triad, F sharp minor triad over a C seven sharp nine, or an E flat half diminished, depending on how you want to look at it. Or B seven, you know, that's also the the melody is a flat nine relative to the root. So there's a whole bunch of choices that he could have done. Um, I hope this was helpful. Let's run through it one more time. chat private lessons that sort of thing and you want to show somebody a, you know a bunch of ways they can play a bunch of voicings that sort of thing um again thanks for watching this was a new chop of the day be sure to check out my app cordy at www.cordyapp.com that's c-h-o-r-d-i-e-a-p-p.com -P thanks for watching